So a few of you guys have asked about what I've been doing to reflow BGA, what the technique I've been using that I've had some success with. This is just a very simple little apparatus. This is just an old GU-10 halogen light fixture. It used to have a glass ball. The, the lamp used to set up inside here. The lamp would actually sit up inside here and there was a glass ball held in place by these three fingers. It was very futuristic looking about 10 or so years ago. And I haven't used these light fixtures for a while and I came to, I got the idea maybe we can get enough heat out of an infrared or infrared energy out of one of these GU-10s to actually reflow some solder on a uh, BGA mounted chip. I tried it about six months ago on my Onkyo receiver and it worked. Uh, it's been working fine ever since. I think when I did it on the Onkyo I didn't have the lamp as low as it is now. Um, I've lowered it down. I've used this technique a couple times and it has worked every time I've tried it. Now your mileage may vary. It may get different results with different types of chips. I've only tried it on some of the chips that are black. There's no, I haven't tried it on any of the ones that are that have got a heat sink on them, for example. Uh, it probably would work on them too, but this is the technique that I've used. If I zoom the camera in here, you'll see the chip is going to get quite warm here. And typically what I do is I leave it sit for a couple of hours. It brings the temperature up fairly slowly, but consistently. And from what I found, it doesn't tend to overheat the chip. Now there are other methods that people have used involving heat guns and hot plates and stuff, and maybe I'll touch on that at some future time. I'll try some of those techniques for reflowing. This is just what I have done personally on the few pieces of equipment that I've had the opportunity to service that have had some problems with BGA soldering and it's worked on I think I've used it a total of three times now in the last year one on Onkyo, one on an LG uh, television and I did the same uh, technique on a cell phone that the microphone amp wasn't working and you couldn't hear the person and I heated the board up the same way and it worked on a cell phone so I'm going to let this thing cook here for a while this is a scrap board and I'm going to see if we can get this thing hot enough to actually remove the IC. You can see we're getting almost to the point where this chip is going to lift. You see that? It's almost to the point where it's going to pop off if I just touch it ever so slightly. So the solder is actually now getting to the point where it's going to, it's going to lift off here. You can see that, right? So, obviously, we're not going to change the chip. But the, the, the point in reflowing a BGA this way is you just want to get the, the, the heat up hot enough to make the solder molten in the uh, effect to try and make it reflow. But if we can get the chip hot enough to remove, obviously the solder is melting because we're able to pop the part off like that now obviously obviously I've damaged the board here because I didn't let it get hot enough but you get the idea it did raise the temperature enough to melt the solder and I was able to lift that chip so we'll try the same thing with this other chip I'll just let this one uh, heat up a little longer than the first one the first one I let it heat up for I say about 15 minutes so I'm gonna let this one go for considerably longer and hopefully this one will just lift right off and uh, show you that uh, you can get enough heat from a light to actually remove the IC and the whole, the whole uh, intent is to not remove it. The intent is just to heat it up hot enough to reflow the little solder balls that are underneath here. And uh, once we get the chip off we'll, we'll, look at the, uh, we'll look at the bottom of the chip here. I would say that uh, it was hot enough. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> so that gives you an idea that, yeah, uh, 
uh, the light bulb definitely will put enough heat to reflow the solder on BGA because that came off without any effort and didn't damage the traces at uh, that time. The first time, the first one I popped off, yeah I did because I didn't let it hit uh, sit long enough to get hot but uh, that time uh, as you can see I was able to take the IC off. Now of course the the intent of this little experiment here is to not try to remove the IC it's just to get it hot enough to melt that solder to restick any cold solder connections on it and uh, as you can see it uh, it did do that that's what we've done that's how it works